supposed to be on the parking lot now of Walmart and had one subject hit from the side. Dispatch to all companies responding. This is going to be a cardiac arrest now. We've got two patients, uh, one is not breathing. Okay, so this is probably not good. <laughs> They're stabilizing her and getting her in the ambulance. Uh, did they say what happened here? No. They didn't uh, say who and how it happened? I'm assuming that SUV got involved. But yeah, obviously. Okay. That's a weird thing. Yeah. So the majority of DUIs are apparent. Oh, yeah. Probably 60% or more of the DUIs are actually heroin and not alcohol. One week later, the woman put on that stretcher died. The driver who hit her told police he was addicted to opioids and had an injection earlier that day. Over the years, we've seen a decline in the number of DUI deaths and things like that. But with heroin, that DUIs are going up. This is America's heroin crisis, and it's not slowing down. Overdose deaths from opioids, including heroin, have surged in the last 15 years. With that comes a wave of addiction and disease, including hepatitis C and HIV. Governor Mike Pence will declare a public health emergency in the southern Indiana County that's the center of an HIV outbreak. Last year, the Centers for Disease Control highlighted 220 counties nationwide at risk of an HIV outbreak. Many of them were here, across West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio, where health officials, lawmakers, and police are at odds over how to get people into treatment and keep them alive. Syringe exchanges like this one, the Cincinnati Exchange Program, take in dirty needles and give back clean needles and other supplies. It's controversial, but this one, unlike most, is mobile and actually hits several spots across the Cincinnati area every week. How many uh, different locations are you guys hitting? Four. Three in Cincinnati and one in Middletown, which is the county north of here, Butler County. There is a public health principle called harm reduction. And what this means is you don't sanction the behaviors that lead people into the wrong direction, but you want to keep them alive and healthy so that they can make it to that next step to recovery. For more than a decade, Dr. Judith Feinberg has urged local governments to set up syringe exchanges to get dirty needles out of the hands of drug users and get them into treatment. Public health officials really understand that harm reduction is an appropriate way to manage an aspect of the epidemic. The problem is getting the political support to do it. And the political support isn't there because, I would say quite frankly, because of stigma. People see individuals who suffer from the disease of addiction, it's a brain disease, as just being people of poor moral character and people without willpower. Zach, it's illegal. If someone was right out here on a corner, that, that's drug paraphernalia, they could be arrested. And now here we're saying the government is now going to get involved in an illegal activity, and that's what it is. It's illegal. County Commissioner Charlie Coleman voted against a syringe exchange in this part of northern Kentucky. We have a, a, a heroin problem. Common sense would tell you that giving a heroin addict a needle, if that's not enabling, and, and you look at the definition of it any way you want, uh, I don't know what is enabling. Research over the last two decades has shown otherwise, that people taking part in syringe exchanges are five times more likely to enter treatment, that exchanges have led to a 70% drop in new HIV cases tied to injection drug use, like they did in Washington, D.C., and notably, that exchanges don't lead to increased drug use. Despite all that, only 27 state governments have reduced barriers to syringe exchanges and many states ban the exchanges outright. 
But even when lawmakers approve, getting an exchange set up in a permanent location means jumping through a lot of hoops. That's something reporters at WCPO in Cincinnati, who we partnered with for this story, have seen up close. A county has to approve it, then a city within the county has to approve it. Uh, there's any number of political obstacles that can crop up. Just the not in my backyard sentiment um, that they understand a needle exchange uh, could curb a spike in hepatitis C, but they don't want it um, on their street. They don't want it next to their businesses or their schools. Huntington, West Virginia has become a national model in how to handle out-of-control rates of addiction and infection. Law enforcement and local government treat the heroin crisis here as a health crisis and treat addiction like a disease. Three days. It's the last time you'll see me. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. Didn't do my first drug until I was 26, and I got a kidney stone here, and um, they put me on Oxycontin 80s and kept me on them for nine months for one kidney stone. And how about a tie? You want to um, yeah, give me a couple of them if you can. Um, I'm down from using uh, two to three grams a day to less than half a gram a day. Oh, that's awesome. Getting clean is easy as hell. That, that's not an issue. Staying clean is the hard part. Another tool in the fight against heroin is naloxone, which blocks and even reverses the effects of opioid overdose. Now it's being put in the hands of emergency responders and even the public. So basically, um, everybody's trained to this use naloxone. This contains no needle or drug. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh. Then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one. Injection complete. So the live doses talk just like this that. Trainer. There is no time to waste, so this officer gets a drug called naloxin ready right away. There's a small response. Can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? It's it's a bad situation we're in, but it's not just us. It's a country. We absolutely have owned the problem. We're keeping real-time data, which a lot of places are still even in denial that they have a problem. But, but, but we're owning it, and we're trying to change the way we do business. Naloxin, um, handing these out to people just who come in through your door, do you know how many recorded saves you guys have had from people using naloxone? Yes, we, um, we started our naloxone distribution training program in February 2012, and since then we've had 481 reported uh, reversals. And that's people who overdosed and naloxone was used to revive them, basically? Correct. In 1989, Seattle's King County started the first syringe exchange in the nation. Now they'll have another first for the U.S., a supervised consumption site where people will be allowed to inject or consume heroin under the eye of a health professional who can revive them in case of overdose. This is something nearby Vancouver has already. Supporters say the goal is getting people into treatment. We have needle exchange programs in most of the areas of the country where we give people clean needles so they don't uh, transmit bloodborne infections like HIV and hepatitis C and hepatitis B. But then we ask them to go outside in the alleyway or into this, the restroom of their local uh, restaurant or coffee shop to inject alone where they can die unattended from an overdose. Uh, what we feel it's more appropriate to bring them inside into a controlled environment, uh, let them in inject where if they have an overdose, the overdose can be reversed and their life can be saved, and then build a relationship, a trusting relationship, so that when that person is ready to enter treatment, they know where they can go and get compassionate care and get linked to uh, a provider of medication-assisted treatment. More people are homeless in Seattle than almost anywhere else in the nation, and sites like these show a part of that. The issue of heroin addiction and homelessness are very much tied together here. These are the sites where people are injecting and consuming drugs. They're not supervised. We won't be able to address the homeless issue unless we have effective treatment on demand, interventions getting people off of drugs 
rather than this movement that Seattle seemed to start at about eight years ago to decriminalize heroin use. Republican Mark Melosha hopes to block supervised consumption sites in the state Senate. Earlier this year, he put forward a bill that would withhold public health funding for any local government that sets one up. We need to go to the treatment programs. We know that work. Go back to what worked. Have the police arrest drug dealers, force people into drug treatment, give them support, treatment on demand, get people off drugs so they can live a normal life. But the sheriff for Seattle's King County says the city can't just arrest its way out of its heroin problem. Now, I've been a uh, police officer for 41 years. A good part of that uh, as a narcotics detective, I was a, a street soldier in the war on drugs. So I think it's pretty obvious what I think about safe injection sites. I don't like them. But I'm also always looking for an alternative to the war on drugs because the war on drugs didn't work. In fact, it's been a failure. I invite anybody who is against safe injection sites to say, OK, what should we be doing? because we have people literally dying in doorways half a block from my office, if not right in front of my office in downtown Seattle. We have needles everywhere. We have an opioid, we have a heroin epidemic in this country. Perhaps this is something we can try to see if we can keep people from dying.